Knockoff Make Switch cards are right around the corner and you don't want to miss this exciting new update. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. The MIG switch is kind of old news by now. You guys have either heard about it or you haven't. If you haven't heard about it, I talk about it already quite a lot on this channel. You can check out one of the other videos where we review exactly what it is and how it works. So I'm gonna assume that you guys are here because you already know what the MIG switch is, you know how it works, and you know a couple things. Number one, you know that to switch games, it requires you to pop the game in and out of your Switch over and over again as it cycles through the game that is being played. And a lot of people have complained that this is gonna wear out your game port and ultimately you're gonna have to open up the Switch and have it fixed. Now, the MIG Switch team say that's not a problem, it's designed to do that. But the reality is, if you have 20, 25, 30 games on one cartridge, that's a lot of times popping it in and out and in and out and in and out to get to the right game. If you're a regular Switch user, you're probably going to use it a lot and you may actually wear it out. Well, there's two exciting newses coming out of China. First, this has appeared all over Chinese websites and it shows a really interesting concept, but it doesn't fully explain what the heck you're looking at. And especially for my North American friends who don't know how to read Chinese, you probably aren't totally sure what you're looking at. So thanks to my expert Google skills, we can use Google Translate to figure out what this says. So we can see here, no need to pull the button to switch, MIG switch burning card and remote control. Reservations are open. Now in the very small writing here, it says use the remote control to switch games with one click, eliminating the need to frequent plugging and unplugging. And what this is, is essentially a small little remote control that connects wirelessly to your MIG switch while it's inside your switch and you can simply push the button there to have it cycle through or toggle through your games without opening and closing it. Why is it wireless? That's the first question I have. Why would they make it wirelessly? The answer is that if you're using this in docked mode, you can switch games on the fly from your couch or whatever. It's kind of a weird choice for me. They do have that little ring around there so you could put a clip on it and then hang it off your switch somehow or off your wrist or I don't know. It seems kind of weird, but this is a first product. So obviously you're not going to be perfect. The other thing that's interesting is the fact that it has three buttons. I wonder if there's a cycle forward and a cycle back option on here. I really hope they've done that, but I don't think so. I'm going to get my, you know, I'm going to be cautiously optimistic on this. And the reason for that is I'm pretty confident how they install this. They say that it actually installs very simply and it requires just a little bit of soldering. And most likely what they've done is they've broke the power connection on the cartridge, on the MIG switch cartridge and just intercepted this wireless chip that just closes the pins and open the pins to simulate popping the game in and out. That's most likely what they're doing here, so it's not gonna be that advanced, but it shows that people are trying to play with this and see what kind of extra functionality they can add, and it won't be long before a little button has been added to the top of this where you just tap that button and it will cycle through games as well, which in my opinion is a whole lot more convenient than having to carry around this wireless dongle. The second news here, and this is the most exciting, I'm glad you guys stayed this long. A lot of people have been talking about how hard it is to get the MIG switch device. I still don't even actually have mine. I've been holding a game in my hands this whole time that's not even a MIG switch because I don't even have one yet. So it's supposed to be here like in the next week or so, which would be great, but I don't have it yet. But that's about to change for a lot of you. The MIG switch is actually a pretty basic design and they even have an exposed screw that you can undo and open up the MIG switch to see exactly what's inside. But as is typical for most new electronic devices, especially like this, they've hidden what the chip is. They've used a Dremel or some other tool to scrape away the chip designation on there. But recently pictures have surfaced on Chinese websites showing a MIG switch card with the chip information fully visible. Now the picture on the left is the original factory actual MIG switch device. The one on the right is a knockoff MIG switch. 
So when we talk about production, we've talked about on this channel before how the MIG Switch team took all these pre-orders, they took all this money and they went overseas to China for manufacturing, even though they say proudly manufactured in Russia, it's not. It turns out it is mass produced at a Chinese factory, just like everybody thought. And those Chinese guys, obviously they're gonna have to have the specs for the device that they're building. So once they've got all the tooling set up and they've filled all the MIG switch orders with the money that they provided, why wouldn't they make a few hundred thousand extras and sell those to all of their friends overseas on sites such as AliExpress. And that's exactly what's about to happen. These cards are getting ready. They are going to be shipping sometime sooner than later. The current speculation is that it's gonna be very, very soon. So all these guys that are still waiting for MIG switch pre-orders are gonna have people getting just the knockoff chips so much sooner and so much faster. And that usually means prices are gonna be coming down. The only side thing to this is that the MIG switch dumper tool is actually ready as well. Taki Udon has one in his hands that he's unveiled on his channel and uh, I'll show you guys kind of what it looks like here. This red box is going to change the Nintendo Switch market forever and after today it will never be the same. Hey guys, Taki here. Today we have a huge video. We're going to dig into that. We're expecting hours at some point in the future, who knows when. But the thing is, the MIG switch and the dumper use the exact same chipset, so it does make a slight chip shortage, but obviously the shortage isn't as big as what the MIG switch team have tried to imply because we're gonna start seeing those knockoffs and they've got no problem getting those chips. And I think it was always just about money. They didn't have enough money to get those orders in bulk, and so they've just been dealing with the money that they've been able to scrape together when they've been able to scrape it together. So really exciting things coming out with the MIG switch. Nintendo has been super cracking down on emulators and game cards and all of that stuff. So we're going to see what their response is to this. They've already started taking down resellers websites in an effort to keep these out of the market. But we have got a new major firmware update for the Switch and we are currently running on Switch firmware version 18 has been released and the MIG switch still works with it. So it has not blocked the MIG switch in any way. And there's no change in functionality to the MIG switch, which is great news. It further solidifies the fact that Nintendo has no way to know if a MIG switch is being used or a regular game is being used. And a lot of people are thinking that Nintendo actually won't even block if they see duplicate certificates for a game pop up across two different switches, mostly because their fan base is a younger audience and it's parents who buy games for the younger audiences. And there's just too much risk in accidentally banning legit owners and they have no clear way to tell who's legit and who's not at this point in time. So very, very promising news for those of you who count on flashcards to back up all of your legit owned games. I'm not talking about piracy, we're talking strictly about backing up the games that you own and playing them on your regular unmodified Nintendo Switch. Have you guys got any questions? Post them in the comments down below. I'd love to chat about this further and I can't wait to share the MIG Switch and the dumper with you when they finally arrive for us as well. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together you'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.